Hello, everyone. Welcome to part three of how to create a PDF with Python. In this video, we're going to create this PDF. So we're going to have a header that looks like this, insert an image, have links to websites and to various chapters. We'll have the chapter header here and then the text of the chapter down here. So if we wanted to get to chapter one, we can just click on this chapter one link here. It'll take us to chapter one. If we wanted to get to chapter two, we can click on that and get to chapter two. With that, let's get started. All right, so I'm using the same script that I use for part two. I have changed this to part3.py here. We'll also need a few documents for this project. You can get these from my GitHub. I'll leave a link to that below. We're going to be using text from the book 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. We're actually going to add that as a title. And we're going to still use a header, but we're going to modify it a little bit. We're not going to have this image here anymore. We are going to set the font. This time, instead of a font of 20, we'll have a font of 15. And last time, we did a little bit of hacking to try and get our title centered in the page. We're not going to use this technique. Instead, what we're going to do is calculate the width of our title and then figure out the position on the page that it should be based on how long our title is. So we'll create a variable called title w for title width. And we'll set that equal to self.get string width. And we'll pass in our title here. That was from up here. What we're going to do is just add a little bit of length to our title so that there's a little bit of padding in between our borders and the title. Now what we'll need is the document width. We can get the document width by self.w. And now we'll set the position of our title. So what we want is set x and then in parentheses and another set of parentheses we'll say document width minus title width divided by two. So what we're doing here is getting the entire width of the document and then subtracting the width of our title. This will give us how much blank space we have and then what we want to do is divide that by two because we want our title in the center of the page so we want our title to start where our left margin ends. To illustrate what we're doing here, I made a diagram. This diagram is ugly, but hopefully it will clarify the logic behind how we are centering our text. We have our PDF width that we get from self.w. That's the width of the entire PDF. We have our title width that we got using width. Then we subtract the title width from the PDF width. This gives us the amount of width that we are not using in our PDF. We can think of it as the leftover space. This process looks something like this, where we have our PDF width and we're cutting off or subtracting the title width from that. This gives us our leftover width. And since we want our title width in the center, we want equal leftover space or empty space on either side of the title. We can figure out the length of each of those empty spaces on either side of the title by dividing our leftover space in two, which will give us something that looks like this. So then this will give us our margins or the space on either side of the title. And it would look something like this, right? So in order to place the text in the center of the page, what we need to do is start our text at the edge of our left margin. So right here. This position is what is calculated with the formula document width minus title width divided by two. Then we can start writing our title from that edge and it will take up that middle space and our title will be centered. If you made it through that description, comment below on a scale of one to 10, how ugly this diagram is. One being, I didn't go blind, so it couldn't have been that bad. And 10 being, <sighs> and now what we're going to do is set the colors of the frame, background, and text. We'll do that with self.set draw color. And the color that we're going to use is blue. So this is RGB and it's going to be the border. To set the background of our title, we'll say self.set fill color 230, 230, zero. 
This is the background color of our title and it's a yellow. To set the text color, we'll say self.set text color. And we'll have a red color, so 220, 50, 50. And we want to set the width of our border line. We can do that with the set line width argument. We'll set that to one millimeter width. For the title, we will use a cell, except for this time, we are actually going to use the title width that we just defined. A height of 10 sounds good. And instead of passing in our own string, we're going to pass in the title here. We do want a border. I'm going to be consistent this time, so I'm gonna say border is equal to one. We do want to move the cursor to the next line after, so we'll set that equal to one. We want to align our text in the center, and we want to fill the background with that yellow color, so we'll set that to one as well. Our line break, this time we'll have a line break of 10. All right, so that was quite a bit of code. Let's check and make sure our header is working the way we expect. We're going to change our output to PDF underscore three dot PDF, save our script, and we will run that. And as usual, I'm going to open this with a web browser because it makes editing a lot easier. Excellent, so we have our title in red text. It has a fill color of yellow and the border of blue. It's also centered in the middle of our PDF. Okay, let's go back to our script. We're going to change our footer just a little bit. We're still going to set the footer for a position of negative 15. Helvetica sounds great with italics and a small point font of eight. This time we'll get rid of the total page count since it's currently not working in this version of FPDF2. And we're going to want the color of it to be a gray color. We can accomplish this by using the self.set text color method. Now let's try 169, 169, 169. So that's a grayish color. We'll save that. Let's run our script, see how our footer is looking. Refresh. And that looks good. We have this light gray page number at the bottom of each page of our PDF now. And now let's add some more interesting content than what we currently have. We'll actually do this by creating another method. What this method is going to do is read in the text files that we have, and for each file, create a new chapter in the PDF. We'll call this method chapter body, pass in self, and we'll also pass in an argument called name, which will be the name of the text file. So first off, we'll start by reading the text file, say with open name RB. What this means is we want to read our text file as binary, and then we're going to save that as FH, and then we will store the text from the text file as TXT. To actually read in our text, we'll use fh.read.decode latin-1. If you would like me to create a video on how to read in text documents with Python, leave a comment below. And now that we have the text of our file, what we're going to do is set the font using self.set font. We'll set it to times regular and 12 point font. To insert the text into the actual PDF document, what we'll use is a multi-line cell. We want this to be the width of the entire PDF so we'll pass in zero for the line width. We'll set a height of five and then include our text. After our text, we want to have a line break. And then in order to add our text, we're going to have to call this method. So let's scroll down here. You may have been wondering from the part two video why we set the font twice down here. That was a mistake. We only needed to set it once. And now since we're setting it in our actual method, we don't need to call it here. We also don't need this for loop anymore. So here we're going to call our method pdf.chapterbody, and we're going to pass in the name of our text. As a reminder, we have chapter one text and chapter two text. So let's call that twice actually, once for chapter one and once for chapter two. Let's save our script, run it and see what we get. Refresh. All right, so we have our 
title and the text is entered in right down here all the way to page eight. One thing you'll notice is there is no differentiation between the chapters. They just kind of flow into one another. So I think actually chapter two starts here. So it'd be nice to have a page break for each chapter and a header and a chapter title to introduce that chapter. Let's go back to our script. We'll go to the chapter body method. And here what we're going to do is just add end of chapter to the end of each chapter. We can do that by calling cell zero, five, and end of chapter. Let's make this text italics. So self.set font, we'll keep using times, italics, and 12 point font. Now let's create a chapter title to add to the start of each chapter. So we'll scroll up here and just below our footer method and just above our chapter body method, we will insert the chapter title method. So we're going to pass in self, chapter number, and chapter title. We'll set font to change it up a little bit. Let's say Helvetica, regular, and 12. We'll give it a background color so it stands out. Self.set fill color. And we'll give it a light blue color, 200, 220, and 255. And we'll set the chapter title. First, we'll create a variable called chapter title, which will be equal to a F string. We'll say chapter, pass in the chapter number in curly braces, colon and then pass in the chapter title. Now what we'll want to do is pass in our title to a cell so it'll actually print it. A width of zero, height of five. The text will be chapter title text. We want to move our cursor to the next line and we are going to fill in the background. Afterwards, we want to add a little line break, self.ln. And we'll just say what we're doing here adding chapter title to start of each chapter. So now that we have a bunch of different methods, let's create another method at the end of our PDF class to tie everything together. We'll call this print chapter and we'll pass in self, chapter number, chapter title, and the name of our text document. What we're gonna wanna do is add a new page every time we start a new chapter. So instead of chapter one flowing right into chapter two, at the end of chapter one, a new page will be called for chapter two. And now let's call our chapter title. Here we'll pass in chapter number and chapter title, and then we'll call our chapter body method. Here we'll wanna pass in the name of our text document. And now that we're using this print chapter method to tie everything together. Instead of using the chapter body down here, we'll actually use the print chapter method. And we'll wanna make sure that we're including all the arguments. So for chapter one, we want to include one to indicate it's chapter one. The title for chapter one is called a runaway reef. And then we'll do the same thing for chapter two. This time it's two for chapter two. The title, is the pros and cons. So let's save that and make sure everything's working. We'll run our script and check our PDF, control R. Let's scroll up to the top. So we have a new page added here. And now we have our chapter title, A Runaway Reef, except for it does look like it's missing chapter one, A Runaway Reef. So we'll check out why that's happening in a little bit, we have our end of chapter text there and our chapter title for chapter two. Okay, so now let's figure out why we don't have chapter and chapter number added. This will actually give us a chance to see how we're tying everything together. So let's figure this out. We're calling the print chapter method. We're passing in chapter one, the title and the file of our text that we're reading. So here is our print chapter method. We have our chapter number, chapter title, and name. Now what we do is add a new page. That looked like it was working. And then call our chapter title. So we pass in the chapter number and the chapter title. 
And then we go to our chapter title method here. We get our chapter number, chapter title, set the font, set the fill, and here's the problem right here. So we have our variable called chapter title, but we're using ch title here. So we'll just rename this chapter title and everything should be working after that. Even though we found our error, let's keep looking at the code to see how everything is working and fitting together. So after our chapter title is called, our, we call our chapter body, which is right here. And it reads in our text, sets the font, adds the text to a multi-cell, and then at the end of all of that, we add in the end of chapter. And that happens twice, once for chapter one and once for chapter two and creates our PDF. So now that we've made those updates, let's save, run our script, refresh, and there we go. We have chapter two, the pros and cons, and we should have chapter one up here as well. Chapter one, a runaway reef. All right, good work on that. We're going to stop there for now and extend this into a fourth part. In that fourth section, we will go over how to add this title page, the background image, links to websites and links to places within your PDF document. We'll also go over how to set document properties. So how to set the title of the document and the author. So when you go to properties here, it'll have the title and the author set with the PDF. If you have any questions, please be sure to leave those in the comment section below. Otherwise, thanks for watching.